Today we're going to look at ferrule crimp tools from Weha and this new version. We do love a ferrule AFX. Certainly do. Takes us back to one of the first video series we produced on ferrules where we went into everything from the various colour code systems to the types and where and the advantages of using them. So I will leave a link above my head somewhere and in the description below where you can check out that series if you're new to the world of ferrules. But for the seasoned expert, Gary, what didn't we look at in that series? We never took a look at the tools in any great depth and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the head, some rules. We're going to talk about this new one that's not just got a lovely looking head, it can rotate 360 degrees to make yourself life easier when you're in those panels. And that's what we've been doing behind us and we're a bit of panel wiring, so it brought together this video. Yeah, and as we go through, we'll try and dispel some of the myths that popped up in the other series so people ask us lots of questions and perhaps start with the first one is why would you invest in should we say a, a well-engineered german tool right as opposed to one that you might get from a well-known online retailer that does next day delivery for free well let's take a closer look because uh, i think you'll see quite quickly about the um, online retailer and the quality you get with that one so just yeah, give us so a these are both a... sort of pizza cutter style so imagine we're just going to slice open a pizza there um so very similar looking uh, mechanically uh, this one does a square crimp this is a hexagonal crimp we'll come on to that in a bit but it, when you talk about build quality sounds like a castanet yeah where this one is Rock solid. Don't like anything. No. And then it's just that, but the look and feel. And what do people say when it comes to tools? What do you normally get? You get what you pay for, Gordon. Yeah. And uh, so is that enough to tip you in the direction of going for a quality tool? I guess it depends. It depends if you're a, if you're an occasional crimper and, <laughs> and how much feral work you do. But if you're going to be doing a lot of work in panels, a lot of work, repetitive work with uh, flexible cable, um, we think obviously investment in a tool like this is obviously worth it, yeah. even if it's on your wrists. And if you are an occasional crimper, let's display that myth. You can't crimp solid conductors, class ones, and put a ferrule on it. That's a big no, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so these are suitable for uh, class five, class six. There's a bit of a debate on the class two. We're not covering that in this video. We might have to go back in there and explore that one. But it, yeah, it's mainly flexible cables. And in a lot of the case, you, you've cut the end off a prepared cable and you need to put a ferrule on because you want to shorten it. Well, talking about that, let's make a ferrule off then. So uh, let's, uh, let's get in and have a look. Okay, so we'll just demonstrate the difference between these two uh, units here. So I'll start, I've got a six millimeter one here. Okay, and that's got a black sleeve identifying. There is three systems, isn't there, for identifying the colors from these. Oh, two yes. German and one French, am I yes, right? Yes, there are two German and one French and we're in the, uh, currently in the Wiedmuller system. Okay. Is is that exclusively that's all we've got or have we got a mixture of systems we've down? got a mixture that will come on to people will suddenly start seeing some yellow come in so put that in uh we'll go in there and here we go and that's effectively the pizza cutter isn't it yeah that's the pizza cut version and that is hexagonal crimp you can yeah. see that in the end there uh, which I tend to favour if you were working, say, with round uh, terminals. Okay, yep, so screwing round terminals going with that one. Yep, and now here's the same with the new version from Weha, which okay. is, uh, it's even got a part number. Oh, you love a so, part number. Yeah, Give so us that part number. 45223. Okay, that's easy for you to remember. Yep. So if you can come up with a name, a nickname for it, uh, obviously we, it's not a pizza cutter, then fire that in. And then we'll see we've got a square crimp there, so if you can see the difference yeah. between them. So yeah, that's a square one. And also we said the head would rotate. Just show me that head rotating for me, please. Yeah, so I'll just I'll prepare another. And the advantage yeah. of that is obviously when you're working in panels, etc., you can't always get it in going in a certain direction when you've got obviously the original one we looked at. So this gives you a lot more flexibility, doesn't it? Yeah, so imagine you've uh, you've come out some slotted trunking and you're going in the top of a contact or a switch. It's desirable. Uh, does that just rotate it. without, no, there's no, oh, it just clicks around. Clicks around. That's 360 degrees, in we go. Yeah, down there we're just going to, so we front-ended that one. Yeah, yeah. front-ended it. Now another another debate there that we have with uh, people. You'll see there was a tiny bit of uh, tiny bit of copper sticking out the end. And when we looked into it, you have to leave a tiny bit of copper out, and, and it says a gentle twist. Okay. And yes. the other people say you never twist. No. And, and then people over twist. Okay. So yeah. So, so don't yeah don't twist uh, yeah don't yeah. don't uh, twist because actually what you do is start increasing the uh, diameter of the conductor. 
Uh, yeah, the suggestion is, and this is what we've read, you may have a different opinion. Leave it below. A light twist to restore the uh, twist that would be in the uh, in the conductor when they made it. Yeah. And a couple of mil overhanging, won't it? So it's just meant to come through. Between 0.1 and 1 millimetre, oh, depending right. upon the size of the conductor. Now, that was advice from one manufacturer's white paper. I will put that in the uh, description below as well if you want to read more on that, because it saves us keep answering that in the comments. Okay, what sizes can we go up to with these two crimping tools from WeHub? Um, so they're both the same. So they'll both go up to 16 millimeter single conductors, okay. or they will handle up to a two by 10 uh, twin ferrule. So let's just have a look at one of those. We're gonna have a twin there. Now here's where your contrasting color codes come in. So when it comes to twin ferrules, the plastic bit is normally the same. Um, so this is a, a twin 10, but you're now gonna say that's yellow, we used black before, yeah. because suddenly we've strayed into the DIN system. Okay. And that's purely because uh, they weren't in stock in the other one. On the, uh, so you, a little bit of a gentle twist here in order to get them in. Yeah, a little bit on these. And then we just slide that down as we go. So that's, yeah, what's going on? It's a little bit more tricky, obviously, with yeah, the double ones. And, and you want to get them in perfectly. It's a two by six. You can see we're just poking out the end a little bit. Yep. And again, we'll go in on the side. So interesting here, I want to try and align the, um, this is going to create a square profile. I want to try and make the square with that flat. That makes sense, especially if it's going into a cage yeah. clamp. Yeah, so I'll just put that in there. And obviously it's a bigger conductor, a little bit more force. And there's our twin ferrule that's, made of. Yeah, that's nice, I like that. And again, the old tug test that isn't coming off. And that's what you find when you're doing it on class two conductors. Say if this was a 10 mil steel were armored and you were ferrule in the ends, it does slide off, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd say that you might be okay on smaller conductors, but if you get larger, the actual diameter change. If you haven't seen the video we made about conductor classes. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you think conductor classes, we're not, uh, we're not talking about music. Uh, it is the makeup of the uh, different types of conductors. So a class one being a solid conductor. Yeah. Uh, all the way up to a class six, which I've actually got here as well. We can use that to demonstrate the uh, top end um, ferrule crimping on this. Okay, so that is at 16 mil then, is it? Yeah, this is a 16 mil, this is a class six, so it's got masses. Oh right, of, so there's lots and lots of conductors yeah. in there. So really fine stranded, yep, yeah, super fine stranded. And I would check out that video because Gary actually counts how many uh, yeah. strands are in there. Yeah, well, I noticed when you said singing. Yeah, yeah, I did have a song in there, didn't so I? I'll just bring that in. So I've probably gone a little bit too long on the copper before anyone says, but I might just have to trim that. Well, you can see that's a nice, uh, nice ferrule. You'll notice there's no uh, plastic end on this. This is an uninsulated ferrule. Uh, but yeah, that's a neat, uh, a neat tool. A uh, few other things uh, to mention on this. If you make a mistake, we all make mistakes from time to time, Gary. And sometimes if you've got this mechanism uh, trapped, right, okay. uh, there is an easy release mechanism. And we've done that it. a lot of times, haven't we? When you've been doing things like uh, ring crimps and that, and you, you get it to a point and you can't do it. So you're telling yeah. me there's a way to unlock it, is there? Yeah, so if I just so I get so that halfway through the process. Yeah, so you're locked in that position, so for instance. Yeah. Is that there's a quarter a, of a turn? A little turn on that screw there, and oh, wow. I can unlock the mechanism. Well, that's nice, I like that. Could you ever take the head off? No, that's it, yeah. So we think this has been uh, future-proof. Now, obviously, um, put what type of head you prefer. So I tend to prefer the hexagonal for when we're using round uh, conductors. Yeah, so the pizza one, yeah. Oh, round terminals, should I say. And then um, when you get to larger terminals, so say square terminals, you might find on uh, the sort of cage clamps uh, a lot of the stuff you find in control gear. So you prefer to try and match the type of... Uh, match the shape yeah. to that, yeah. So goes you can into see that, yeah, it just, you can see there's a nice flat area on there. Obviously, I don't, it's, it's as, as you get to the bigger conductors, I think it's more of an issue. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Um, so on this one, but you may have on, a chance. I think there's on, some future on. proving. It didn't come with it, but I think you can change the head on this. So if you, ah, right, okay. so if you, you click that across, I'll just, uh, I'll just go for an open there. Click that there. Oh, well that was easy. I can take the head off. Now is this, does this mean in the future we are gonna make you so you can um, possibly uh, have, a, have a selection? Well, I, I can see a pouch already, can't you? <laughs> with them all lined up in there with it sitting in there and you get change between your heads. And that makes sense, doesn't it, when you're doing a lot of that panel wire and you might be doing a lot of cage clamps and obviously maybe you move to a neutral or an earth bar or a screwed in connection and therefore you can change over maybe to the one that I call the pizza, you call the hex. Yeah, you? now I'm just messing, trying to get this back together now. Oh. While I mess around with this, uh, perhaps we need to try some smaller conductors because we've seen them at the at the top end. Yeah, we have. So we're going to go, and it goes, is it down to 0.08? 
something like that for the smallest ones that it does. Yes, it which does. Which is phenomenally so. small, isn't it? Another one for you, obviously, as you're looking at these feral crimping, uh, sorry, the ferals themselves, they're, they're silver in colour, okay? They're made of a material called copper, and we dropped a load on the floor once, and somebody said to us, why can't we pick it up using a magnet? Yeah. Well, we haven't managed to magnetise that copper yet, so we couldn't pick them up using that. So they are, they're tinned, but they are copper tubes, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they're certainly not made of steel. They're not made of aluminium. There's no dissimilar <laughs> metal issues going on there. Um, so go to the other end of the scale, I found some uh, security system cable. Okay, is that a thing, is it still? Well, I think so. I think, uh, it's that fine. It's, it's, it's almost difficult to see. Yeah, now if anyone remembers, when you put a PIR in, those terminals can be a bit of a pain. I remember trying to twist them and double them over. Yeah, so, so this is where you need good eyes. Okay. <laughs> so this is, we're in the, uh, back in the German weed muller system. Okay. And this is a 0.25 millimetre ferrule. Okay, that's, re that's really quite small, yeah. And obviously with the amount of electronics out there in industry now, especially even in the domestic market, it's probably a good idea to have a, yeah. a, a ferrule on the end, isn't it? So, let's go in there with the square profile one. Now you're gonna even struggle to see the square profile, but it has, it's amazing that the size difference you can cope with on this from that tiny, I've never used a 0 0.08 millimetre conductor. That no. must be, uh, yeah. That must be a challenge. Um, the one thing, obviously, we do like about this pizza base one is this little guide, which yeah. really helps you. If you put that back down, we'll have another look at that. So that's for the smaller conductors. It goes up to four mil, doesn't it? It so does. So I'll bring that one in. You can see we've got a little guide there. So 0 0.08 to 0 0.35, and then obviously the farthest end is 2.5 to four mil, which helps you locate it into that pizza cutter itself, yeah. doesn't it? So have another go? I'm going to have another go. No, the other way I could have done this was just put the guide in, actually. Yep, and then drop it through the guide. You can hold it in there and then bring your conductor in. Yeah, that yeah it. So that's a great one. feature on there. You know, probably a bit long on the copper there. But great tools. As I say, we've been using this one uh, for... Ooh, over two, what are we getting over two years? Yeah, it was, I think one of the very first videos we shot in this unit was that actually on that feral crimping tool, and yeah. we fell in love with it then. Yeah. And obviously now we've got this 360, as we said before, you're working in a panel. It's not always the, the, the way to go, and you want to front end it, you want to come in from the side. Got the option of rotating around. And I think as well, on your wrist, that is a lot easier this mechanism. Is, yeah, this is super, obviously, you, you, as you get bigger conductors, you need more effort, but that is very, very comfortable. And you're in there all day, maybe yeah. feral crimping, yeah, building that panel up. Huh. It doesn't sound like a casting it, does no. it? <laughs> so, the choice is yours. Obviously, I'm sure uh, people have lots of comments when yeah. it comes to ferals. Hopefully, we've dispelled some of the myths. Yes, we have, hopefully. Okay. But uh, we want to hear uh, your thoughts. Uh, what tools are you using? Have you got any other top tips? Yeah. Uh, put them below, and uh, Gary will try and answer as many as he can. I will.